Hey guys, so today I got another video for you. Um, I want to share with you uh, a new Purple Heart addition to my collection. And, um, you know, I don't want to say I'm excited to have, to be able to add this to my collection. Uh, in a way I am, but uh, really going forward I should say I'm humbled to be able to add this item to my collection. Uh, you guys know I show a lot of excitement and enthusiasm when I make these videos because, you know, it really is fun you know, finding the items uh, of history to collect and preserve and everything. And, um, you know, but I, very, I am very well humbled uh, whenever I do add a Purple Heart to my collection. Because obviously that means someone shed blood, you know, for this country. Whether they were just wounded and they recovered and came back home. Or they were actually killed in the service. Um, and so I'm very humbled. Um, I am thankful to be the caretaker of uh, another Purple Heart item, and uh, you have my word that I will give it all the honor and respect that it deserves, and I'll display it um, to preserve the memory of the man that I'm going to tell you about today who uh, gave his life uh, in the service of this country. And so um, I've got quite a bit of paperwork here printed out. I'm going to go ahead and bring you in, and I want to tell you about this service member. All right. So as you see, uh, like when I normally make these Purple Heart videos, I've got a table full of research here, a lot of paperwork, a lot of time spent researching uh, this service member. And um, this is the Purple Heart that he was awarded uh, posthumously. And as you see, it's the Purple Heart, the ribbon bar, and it's got the little pin there at the top as well. Um, I'll flip it over here. This Purple Heart is engraved, and it's to Mr. Arthur, and the B stands for Bernard. Stoff, uh, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Arthur Bernard Stoff. And something I wanted to show you is this purple heart is actually numbered. It's 473520, so it is a numbered purple heart. And so, um, yep, like I said, I want to tell you about the man that that was um, awarded to. And so, kind of a backstory, real quick. So, a collector friend of mine has actually had this Purple Heart in his collection since last year. And uh, I've been interested in it, honestly, since the beginning of this year. I believe it was around January or February uh, when I saw uh, you know, my collector friend actually had this in his collection. Uh, and we started talking back and forth for a while about it. Um, and he was actually in the middle of a move and just different things going on. So, um, you know, a lot of things went into storage and took time to get uh, resituated in his new home. And so um, he was able to, you know, relocate this Purple Heart and give me the opportunity uh, to get it from him. And so I'm very thankful for that. It's definitely been about a, probably about at least a six or seven, maybe even eight month uh, process or I guess wait time. But I'm very um, thankful to have it now. And um, it was awarded to this uh, man right here. Again, his name was Arthur Bernard Stoff. And I uh, just want to tell you a little bit about him um, from the research I've done so far. And... Um, he was actually born on May 17th of 1921 in Paul Tuckett, Rhode Island. Um, he was one of five children, and he was born to uh, Mr. Charles and his wife, Agnes Stoff. And um, from what I've found so far, and again, the research continues, is that uh, he was a painter. He did construction and maintenance work and everything. Um, he actually attended the University of Rhode Island. And he enlisted in the service on January 17th of 1942 in Providence, Rhode Island. And after being, uh, after enlisting in the service, he actually became a member of the 27th Armored Infantry Battalion of the 9th Armored Division. And those of you guys that follow me, you guys know how much I'm attached to the 9th Armored, how much I love, you know, researching and collecting items from that unit because of my veteran friend. Um, and so I'm very attached to the 9th Armored. Um, and from all the research I've done, I've been trying to find the exact company of the 27th Armored Infantry Battalion that uh, he was a member of. And I'm pretty sure, I'm about 80 to 90% sure that he was in A Company. There's a chance he could have been in B, but I I'm, I'm pretty confident it was A Company. I'm going to continue to research just to uh, make sure that that is correct. But again, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm right on that based off what I've researched and studied. Um, unfortunately, there's not a lot of rosters out there. Uh, if you get lucky, you might could find something maybe a service member had of their own they brought home after the war. But uh, a lot of records and stuff, you know, were purposely destroyed. And we know there was a fire uh, years ago in the 70s and everything. 
But anyway, so again, uh, he was a member of the uh, the 27th Armored Infantry Battalion of the 9th Armored. Um, just a little bit of information about him. Basically what I'd already said. Again, he was from Rhode Island. Um, this right here I want to show you is uh, a record of his birth. And you see uh, Paul Tuckett, Rhode Island. And uh, there he is right there, Arthur Bernard Stoff. And again, it was on May 17th of 1921. Um, and so, you know, he served with the 9th Armored. And like I said, the research continues. And, um, you know, the 9th Armored really got their, I guess, baptism and fire, so to speak, uh, at the beginning of the Battle of the Bulls, December 16th, 1944. Um, there were a few units of the 9th that did get into some... Uh, you know, some action against, you know, the Germans before the Battle of the Bulge started and everything. Uh, but again, the main uh, baptism of fire for this uh, division was the Battle of the Bulge. And so they fought hard starting from day one, December 16th, 1944. And uh, they fought all through December and into January and, and, and on into Germany and so forth through the end of the war. And so, again, the research still continues and everything. But what I've been able to find is that Arthur here, um, he was wounded and he died later. Um, evidently, is the same day or it could be the following day of his wounds. Um, his death is listed as December 21st of 1944. Um, and again, I don't know if he died the same day or if it was the following day. Uh, kind of what I'm leaning towards is he was maybe seriously wounded, or obviously he was, and maybe he was taken off the line farther back and died later that day. Or again, it could have been the following day. So I'm still kind of trying to narrow down when the wounding took place. Um, but he was basically killed in action. He did die of result of wounds in action. So um, unfortunately killed in action. Um, I am looking forward to finding more information about him as I'm able to. But um, from what I've been able to find is it seems that um, he was, you know, he lost his life. Uh, in the Battle of St. Vith, around that area of St. Vith, there was a lot that took place um, in December of 44. Uh, a lot of skirmishes, a lot of battles, and different things took place around that city. Um, a lot of Germans lost their lives, a lot of Americans lost their lives and everything. And so it was around that city, or maybe even in that city, that um, Arthur, you know, gave his life and was killed. Um, he was only 23 years old. And um, unfortunately, I've got some other news for you guys, is that, uh, again, I told you earlier in this video, he was one of five children born to Charles and Agnes. Well, unfortunately, he was not the only child uh, who lost their life during World War II. Um, Arthur actually had a brother named Norman, and Norman, as you see here, he was killed in action on August 16th of 1944. And so Norman was killed four months before his brother Arthur. Um, I'm still trying to find information on Norman here. Um, there was a small obituary that was attached, and I blew it up here. And uh, he was killed in France, and it was August 16th of 1944. Uh, he was a private at the time. Um, Arthur was uh, a Tech 5 when he was killed at the time. Um, not sure if Norman was older or younger than Arthur. There is no birth date. Uh, again, I'm still trying to research more on Norman. Um, but it's very sad that both of these brothers and, you know, two of the sons of Charles and Agnes, you know, were killed during World War II in the service of their country. God bless their family. God rest their souls. Um, you know, there's the saying, we've all heard it so many times, that uh, some gave all and all gave some and uh these two young men i should say because they were both young um they gave all you know and so again i'm very humbled to have this purple heart and to be able to research uh, the service of both of these men uh something else i wanted to share with you is from what i've found out both of the brothers were buried overseas and what i can show you here this is actually on a little bit of, of the obituary of norman it says a funeral was held for Norman and his brother Arthur on April 22nd of 1948. And so it was, what would that be, over three, maybe three and a half years, or I'm sorry, not three and a half years, about two and a half years after the war ended, uh, where the brothers were evidently sent back uh, home 
back to the United States. Uh, their remains were sent back, and then they had a joint funeral on April 22nd, 1948. And so... Y'all, y'all that follow me know I have four children. I couldn't imagine losing one of them, uh, much less losing two, two of them. Um, I just couldn't imagine all the heartache and everything that these parents felt of losing not only one but two sons. Um, but um, I am very thankful to have this. Um, I just want you guys to know that I will honor it and everything and, and carefully take care of it. Um, one thing that I do with the Purple Hearts in my collection is um is i like to keep them displayed like this i will have a ninth armored patch uh here kind of propped up but i like to keep these purple hearts with the lid open because i want to keep their memory alive you know we think when we go to funerals and everything that it might be an open casket for example sometimes the casket lid is open and then after the viewing after the funeral the lid is closed permanently and then the casket goes into the ground so I like to, um, you know, display these uh, and honor them with the lid open. And so as a way of keeping the memory of the service member that the Purple Heart, whether, again, wounded or killed in action, is kept alive. I want to keep their memory alive, so I keep the lid on the Purple Heart box open. I don't want to keep it closed. I don't want to store Purple Hearts closed because I want to keep their memory alive, if that makes sense to you guys. And so um, I am going to continue to research uh, not only Arthur, but his brother Norman as well. Um, I wanted to show you guys a couple other things right here. I found this online, and it's got both brothers listed side by side. So you got Arthur and D.O.W.'s died of wounds, and Norman, uh, K.I.A., um, obviously he was evidently killed right away. Um, he didn't, you know, die later that day or maybe the following day like Arthur did, but... You got a private, which was Norman, and a Tech 5, which was Arthur. Um, I also found this right here. This is uh, another report basically having to do with those that were, you know, died or were killed in the service of their country. And at the very bottom, both brothers, you got Arthur and Norman, Tech 5 and private. Um, again, they were both um, killed in action. Um, I do have a little bit of other stuff here on the table. Um, this right here has to do with the 9th Armored Division, Battle of the Bulge. Um, you know, it talks specifically about the 16th through the 25th. It talks about, you know, leading up to St. Vith, which again, evidently is where Arthur um, was wounded and later died of those wounds. Um, it was a major battle, so if you're interested, look it up. A lot took place around that key city. Um, but yeah, I'm so thankful to have this. Uh, again, this is my third 9th Armored uh, Purple Heart in my collection. Um, I now have two that were, you know, killed in action. I have one that's just a, a wounded in action Purple Heart. Um, but honestly, I would I would really um, be thankful uh, and be humbled and honored to own more of these. Um, I'm all about, you know, medals and things staying in the family. But as you guys know who collect like I do, uh, a lot of times things like this, are thrown away they're not cared for they're not appreciated um and families you know just want to get rid of them they don't care about it or maybe there's no one to pass these items on to and so it's not a bad thing for items like this to make their way in collections like mine and like a lot of yours because we are going to honor it we are going to appreciate it and a lot of times us collectors or um history buffs um caretakers We'll take better care of these than actually family members will. And that's the honest truth. A lot of you will agree with that. But anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up. Um, those of you that do have any Purple Hearts in your collection, please please take care of them. Please honor them. Uh, please don't have them just stacked up in a corner of your room, your man cave, or buried in a closet because that's not doing any honoring in my opinion. Um, consider what I said about keeping the lid open, keeping the memory alive, their memory alive. Um, I think that's a very good way of putting it. Um, but yeah, God bless all of you. I appreciate those of you that continue to support me. I'm trying to come up with more video ideas and, and make videos more often. Uh, let me know what you think about this. Um, God bless all of you, and I'll be getting back to you soon. Thank you.